So this is the thumbnail, but it's not just any thumbnail. It's an actually, it's a special thumbnail. So what we're gonna be covering today is I'm gonna be showing you how to write a Python program to dynamically create a thumbnail, upload it to your YouTube channel to a specific video. Welcome back everybody. Hopefully you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you celebrate it, um, I took some time off, <laughs> I was tired. So, uh, you know, it was interesting when I was doing my wonderful stuff over Thanksgiving, I came across a channel that I apparently have never come across before called Mr. Beast, which I'm shocked by the number of subscribers he has. Um, but he had a interesting video, right? So he had this one right here, and it's based like this whole concept, like, okay, if you click this video, I'll give my friend apparently a percent of a percent, or I don't know, a 10th of a penny. I don't even know how to say that. Regardless, this was kind of inspiring because I said, well, that's interesting. I said, so does he just update this every day or does he just update this every week? Or, you know, he has a whole team of people, I'm sure, but it kind of inspired me. And I said, well, that's interesting. I said, I wonder if you could write a Python program where you could dynamically update the thumbnail so that way it could change certain metrics like whatever you were advertising so in this case we're doing subscribers but you could do other things you could do like video likes you could do oh geez i don't know a uh, number of viewers or something something like that but the idea behind it is how do we create a python program that would create a thumbnail using information from maybe an api like youtube uh create that thumbnail then upload it to that video that we want to cover using the particular YouTube API. And so I started exploring with it and it's very much possible. I did it. So to kind of celebrate our two year anniversary, that's what we're going to be doing. Can you believe it's already been two years? And so I basically like, here's kind of what we're going to be doing. I took my first video I ever uploaded and I put a nice little thumbnail on it. Uh, obviously when I create this new video that I'm recording right now, I'm actually gonna put on the one I'm recording right now, but I'm gonna be showing you how to create this thumbnail using Adobe Illustrator and Python, and then uploading it to the video that we're currently seeing. So the idea behind it is, you know, one day, hopefully, this channel will get to 100,000 subscribers. We're already at 17,400 and then some change, but it's crazy. I mean, two years and it's already at that amount, I mean, crazy. I never would have envisioned that. So it's kind of interesting, but that's basically the goal of today's video. Now, before we jump into the code, there's definitely a bunch of stuff we kind of need to cover beforehand, just, you know, kind of more of the technical aspect of it. And then also just laying out some of the nuances about uh, what's specific to my situation, and then also sharing some code with you. So probably this first video, we're not going to go into the actual like deep coding of it. It's more just kind of setting up the problem like we just did, ex kind of explaining what we're trying to do. And now that we've done that, I do want to kind of just take some step backs and just let you know what kind of services I might be using and just things that you need to be aware of. I have a nice little PowerPoint presentation to help us with that. Oh, let's just go from here. Okay, so we're going to be using the YouTube API, obviously. So uh, YouTube does allow you to upload thumbnails using their API. So I will be showing you how to do that. Now, specifically with the YouTube API, I have covered this topic in previous videos when it comes to setting up an account with uh, your Google Council and then registering an application with the YouTube API. So uh, I will not be covering that in this series. I will be putting some videos down below so that way you can reference that topic. The only reason why is it's a pretty in-depth topic. It's going to span over like two or three videos. And I really don't want to go through that process again, especially since I have the content already up on YouTube. So I will be putting those links down below. But the main thing with the YouTube API is one, uploading the thumbnail. That's one particular service we're going to be using. And then the second one is also getting our current subscriber count. So that is a metric that you can get from the YouTube API. Additionally, this particular script will be specific to Windows. I do not work on Mac. I don't necessarily have a plan to yet. And when it comes to interacting with Adobe Illustrator, that is the main application I use to create thumbnails. Um, it is actually possible to interact with that particular application using the Win32.com library. Again, I do have a 
few videos, not very many, where I kind of just explore, you know, what does that look like from a Python perspective? So we will be using the Win32 COM library in order to interact with the Adobe Illustrator application. So that is a Windows specific library. So you cannot use Win32COM on Mac. I'm going to repeat that again. You cannot use Win32COM on a Mac. Now you can technically automate Adobe on a Mac using Apple Script and I think even JavaScript as well. However, when it comes to interacting with that particular language or that particular framework in Python, I don't have any content on that, unfortunately. So this is unfortunately restricted to Windows. Uh, additionally, this is just me doing this. You don't technically have to do number three. I will be hosting my code on an Azure virtual machine. The only reason I am doing that is simply because I plan to be running this code actual real time. And so I have to make sure I have things like a stable internet connection. I have to make sure that uh, something's powering the unit and stuff like that. I cannot always guarantee that my laptop is going to be able to do that. Really, what you kind of have to ask in this situation is how frequently do you want this thing updated? If it's something where you want it to like update constantly real time and you're interacting with a particular application, you're probably going to want to do something like a virtual machine. The only reason why is things like internet connections, they can be a pain in the butt because, you know, you never know when your internet's going to go out. Things like power, things like just general things that can go wrong with a computer system. Uh, virtual machines try to limit that from happening. It doesn't mean it's not always going to happen, but the chance of it happens usually is dramatically less. And so in that situation, depending on how frequently you would want to update this, if you're trying to update it like every five minutes and you don't want something always going on in the background in your system, then a virtual machine might make sense for you. Additionally, uh, I will be using Python 3.964 bits in this tutorial. Most people are on 3. Point something, somewhere in the range of 3.9. Just keep in mind that some syntax might be slightly different depending on what version of Python you're using. So you always want to make sure that um, you're, if you're not using the same version that I am using, that you're following the syntax for that specific version. So just be aware of that. I want to make sure that's out there so that way people aren't going like, hey, are you using 3.9, 3.7, you know, 2.7? If you're still on 2.7, eh, I won't get into it. But that's just something I want to throw out there. Additionally, uh, this particular thing about the Azure Virtual Machine, everything I'm doing can be done on your local system. So again, I'm just going to reiterate that everything I'm doing can be done on your local system. You did not have to do an Azure Virtual Machine. I'm just doing it because uh, I already have one and it just kind of made a little bit more sense. So with that, we're going to jump to the next part, which is exploring a little library that I have publicly for everybody. So at this point, you know that I have a ton of repositories. In fact, if you are new to the channel, two things. First, subscribe. And then if you want notifications, make sure to turn on the little bell notification and then go to my GitHub and follow me or something. Just bookmark it because I have 51 repositories. Some are public, some are private, but regardless, I have a ton. Um, anytime I release code, it's usually through my GitHub. Otherwise, I would probably be putting it to my Facebook page. But I have a repository on there called YouTube Python Client. This is the library that I use to manage my YouTube channel. So a lot of this is code that's specific for me but I do add to it from time to time. So things like being able to pull comments, being able to pull things like video history or update thumbnails. A lot of that code I already have pre-written. So if you want, you can definitely leverage this code. Like if you are a YouTube content creator yourself and you need something to kind of just get started, by all means, take this code and run with it. Um, just because I've done a lot of the setup for you and you can add to it whatever you want. If you ever want YouTube data, I have that as well. You can use my videos there. I gave it to you. Um, but I will be hosting pretty much everything that I'm using in this particular series is going to be on this particular repo. So you're going to want to make sure that you either bookmark it or clone it to your system. And then just be aware that I do make changes to it. So every once in a while, you might want to make sure um, you're doing your Git pulls just to make sure you're getting the latest code. But inside this particular repo, you'll notice there's a folder called YouTube. And inside of here, this is where I have my main YouTube client. So this is where I'm doing things like the tokens, all the fun stuff, updating the videos, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. And then I also have one that is specific to 
Adobe Illustrator. Now, this is where I always kind of have to draw that line. I'm not gonna be writing all this code out again. Really, my goal is to basically replicate one of the scripts that I already have written on here. Um, at some point, I do plan to go into this particular topic. However, because that content's not technically up yet, I will briefly go over some of the different functions as we use them in the main script, only because I wanna make sure that you guys are aware of kind of what's going on. And if you wanted to go in here and start changing stuff, at least you have an idea of what my thought process was and kind of how I structured the code in the bigger scheme of things. So um, I will not be writing this code, but I will be kind of talking about it in tandem with writing the main function. So just be a little bit aware of that. If you're going like, if you're gonna cover it, I'm not gonna be covering it. Same goes with the YouTube stuff. I already have a video on this topic, so I will be referencing that in the description below. So this has a lot of functions in it, and I just don't wanna write it again. <laughs> it's a lot of code sometimes, <laughs> but we will be recreating this used dynamic thumbnail. So with that being said though, uh, I think at this point, I'm gonna cut off the video. So again, this was kind of just our main introduction. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to clone the repo to your local system, and then we'll go through the process of writing the code for you. So at this point, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Again, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We always love when people subscribe. And then additionally, if you do plan to be using any of the code I make available, uh, GitHub, and then also Facebook, because I do post code there sometimes as well, just because it's a little bit easier, especially if I have like Excel workbooks and PowerPoint stuff. It's like, ugh, it's just easier to put it there. So thank you again for watching, everybody. We'll see you in video number two.